for close combat cane self-defense. Cane self-defense uses the whole cane. Any basic different way you can use it doesn't matter. There's no one right way. There's no wrong way. As long as you can defend yourself, that's the basic measure. But I'm going to show you some simple ways to use the crook of the walking cane to defend yourself in a very simple and powerful, easy to follow, easy to understand, and easy for you to execute way. Start with a warm up. You're going to swing it through one hand. I'm just putting it here. The palm is facing the sky. The long side comes out. I crank it forward. And I'm just going around and around. Cane self-defense requires proper warm-up. So when you're doing a cane self-defense lesson with me, I'm always going to have you do this basic spinning to develop the callus on your hand, get the blood flowing through the joints, into the tendons, the muscles, so you can stay safe from injury during your workout. Also, if you do it standing, and you can also do it sitting, I have the chair out because I want to talk about close quarters combat or close quarters, close combat self-defense with the cane using the crook today and to do that i want to show you you can also do it in a seated position now bring it over and back this is just part of the warm-up part of the warm-up over and back that forces your stomach to squeeze up and in this is going to improve your posture it's going to improve your core strength this is going to make you very strong explosive in self-defense from here put it in the other hand the palm again is just facing the sky that long side comes out here you crank it forward, just around and around. Try not to whack yourself in the head, but if you do, that's all right. You're gonna learn faster that way. Bring it over and back, kind of like a slap across the face and a backhand. Super simple, easy warm up. but I want you to level up some of your te te techniques today. So we're gonna talk about close quarters combat, or close quarters self-defense using the walking cane. And we're gonna focus on the crook. Now that's a good warm up. I want to talk about the crook real quick, quickly on this cane. This is the Cane Masters Dojo Cane in oak. I like oak. They also make it in hickory. You can see the link below if you're interested in what they cost. They're not expensive. It's a good investment. But I want you to see this special feature here on this cane because it has a tooth there. Candy says, so happy to catch yourself a line of one. She has classic wooden cane, aluminum, or needs a wooden cane. She has aluminum. Start with what you have. Invest your time before you invest your money. When you're ready to look at the link below and see how really inexpensive these are. This is a very durable. It's got the wider crook here. That allows you to do the combat cane spinning, but it also gives it more room, different parts of the body to reach up, snatch them in and pull them down. We're going to talk about that in close quarters combat using your cane using the crook of the cane. This right here, this hard piece of oak, beveled right there, comes to a bite in the face, into the skin. That tooth has a nasty bite. We're gonna use that. I also look at this part here as a hammer, either smashing, there's a little bit more weight here, or this one here. Uh, Candy says she wonders if she could spin hers with the angled one. You might, you might not. What you have to do, if it's at that angle, is just modify your hand, play around with it, and if you can't spin it, don't worry about spinning. Just do a nice warm up with your hands. If you put your hands together like this, fingers up and to the side, that's gonna loosen up the joints. That's gonna get the blood flowing. So if you can't spin, skip it. Skip the spinning, grab the cane, and start striking with me. After um, you have the tooth, you have that hammer, that big smash in the face, kind of like a uh, what do we call that? Irish fighting stick, the shillelagh. A shillelagh has a hammer on the end or a little knob, usually a hard piece of wood, like the knot of a tree, and that's used to destroy, to smash. Remember, when we talk about self-defense, especially with the walking cane, walking cane self-defense or a self-defense cane, the ideas are using situation awareness first, pay attention, but then what can you remove or destroy? Their ability to see, breathe, mouth, and you're going to let the cane do the work and let your body do the work instead of trying to overpower the other person is turn, trying to be faster, boxing them, grappling, putting them on the ground, you're going to use the cane, which is hard piece of wood. In Candy's uh, example, hers is made out of metal. This is oak. You could have hickory. You could have any type of material. It's going to be stronger than their nose, right? Than their eyeball, than their ear, than their teeth, than their lips, than their throat, the cartilage in their neck. You can crush that with your palm or the side of your hand with your elbow, with your forearm, pushing straight in for self-defense. You can do that much or more 
using your cane. That's what we're gonna talk about, close quarters combat using the crook. So we have that tooth there, and I know that yours might not have the tooth that might be rounded, but it doesn't matter because, again, you're putting that, that man-made material, if it's metal or natural material, if it's wood, against their flesh, and it's gonna do some damage. Whether it rips it out like that tooth does or not, maybe it won't if you don't have the Cane Master's cane. If you want one, again, look at that link below. But either way, use what you have. No matter what it is, use what you have. It's gonna work for you if you practice it a little bit. Or you have this big smashing hammer. Or I actually also think of it as a big fist. It's about the size of my fist. I think of that as that middle knuckle. Like you stick that knuckle out and you stick that right in for self-defense. That part there to the teeth, to the nose, smashing the eyes, going in through the throat, smashing into the solar plexus. And let's talk about how you get in the position to use the crook of your cane for self-defense. Number one, I'm gonna tell you from the start, I'm not gonna have you grab and twist and spin and try to flip them around and lock them up with your crook. You can learn that. We're not gonna learn it today because I want you to start from scratch, from the very beginning as a very beginner. How do you use this thing? I'm not gonna teach you a complicated series of movements that you then have to remember and practice over and over and over again. Harold says, he loves his cane master's training cane. It's a great stick for sure. Thank you, I agree. From here, you put your weight on your cane. Now, I have my cane kind of in the traditional way you see most people carry them, with the crook facing my opponent, facing the bad guy. My weight's here, I'm just gonna pop it up into my hand. Now, that's the other reason I have you do so much of this spinning. I want your hands to have their own little brain, their own sense of awareness, proprioception, space, spatial awareness, timing and distance. From here, I have my weight on the cane. Sorry, I'm gonna have this one facing out. I'm gonna pop it up into this position. Now from this position with the crook facing out, I'm going to do the first technique, which is just a straightforward thrusting motion, also known as a jab in boxing. Now if I'm boxing, I'm punching, I'm jabbing, jabbing. Now you might not be as strong as you were. You might have some compromised uh, physicality because of your body, some illness or something that's happened in your life, or you had something since birth. None of that's gonna matter. I'm not asking you to box the other person with your hands. I'm ask, asking you to thrust or box with that thrusting motion with the wood or the metal, if yours is metal. This is where it becomes very important that you understand technique. Oh, this basic technique is very important and very easy to do as opposed to learning how to do traditional fighting. Now, if you can fight, that's great. If you know how to box and move and do all that, then you're way ahead of the game. If you're just getting back into, nylon one's gonna work from England. You said you had a nylon one, that's also gonna work because all of those materials are hard, whether it's a, a polymer or plastic or a wood material or metal. They're all gonna be stronger than flesh, and that's the whole point. You're going to go straight in, this very first motion, from here to here and thrust, and your target is either gonna be nose, eyes, teeth, throat, solar plexus, groin, well groin a little bit lower, private parts, or between that belly button and the private parts, that thin layer of muscle that holds your guts in. You're gonna hit them right there and stick them on the ground. So again, crook facing out, first position, your weight's on it, you're minding your own business, you see the threat coming because you're doing situational awareness, and you pop your hands up like this and you say, back up, I will defend myself. It's my right, defend my, you don't have to like me, but you can't touch me. Get away from me. Bam, straight in, right into the face, as hard and as fast as you can. And again, it doesn't have to be as hard as a boxer's punch. You don't have to be Floyd Mayweather himself or Conor McGregor throwing a punch because you're gonna let the wood do the work and smash that into the face. Now, from here in this position, when I strike from one, I'm immediately gonna bring the other hand onto it because I'm gonna use that first strike to catch them off guard, hit, this, hit their sensitive vital spots, move them back a little bit. They might even react and you might not hit them, but then from here, you wanna get that other hand on it as soon as you possibly can. And now you're gonna use this as that hammer. From here, I'm gonna strike down at an angle like I'm chopping wood. Maybe that's a better description because of that Cane Masters tooth right there. Cane Masters, this is the oak cane. They make it in hickory, which is stronger. But that tooth on a Cane Masters cane is gonna do a lot of damage. Right now, we're using this part here. You can see it's a little flat, 
but it's very thick, it's very substantial. And from here, using your body to turn, you're very strong in this position, just like you're chopping wood. And just like you would chop wood, if you've ever chopped wood correctly, you know to let the ax do the job. Let the ax do the job. Don't muscle it through, but turn your body. Turn your body. And your target, eyes, ear, neck, maybe you hit the neck and you knock them out right away. Maybe it's the joint, you go for the shoulder joint, the elbow joint, the wrist joint. They're reaching out, they're grabbing, they've got that knife, but you're gonna go straight in, immediately put that other hand on it and come down through the angle. And then the third strike, you're gonna thrust again with two hands. Now you're gonna be much stronger than that first thrust. And hopefully you've already hit them with at least one of those two first strikes. Now you're coming in to try to finish them off create distance and push them back. So from this position, close quarters combat, I'm here, they're right on top of me, I go right to the face, the other hand here, striking down, stepping in, and thrust. Now, this is my right hand, I'm left-handed, but I, I favor the right when I do this kind of stuff, I've been teaching for so long. So I'm gonna step in with the right as I push with the right. I want you to practice it on both sides, put in the left, pop it up, Back up, use your verbal command. Back up, don't get any close. Bam, smack, straighten the face. Bring that other hand on it. Turn your body down, chopping wood, and thrust right into the face. Now, I've got one more because I like to build combinations for you to practice. And by no means are these only the only things that you're gonna do with the crook of your cane, especially if you have a cane master's cane with this crook here, with this tooth. I have not seen, I've seen this idea on other canes, but I haven't seen it that often. And you don't see them on most of the, the just the simple, you know, like the Carex cane you might get for 10 bucks. By the way, I keep breaking those $10 canes that I bought years ago when I first started teaching these. And I used to say, get that from Amazon. But once you break two or three of those, you paid about the same amount of money that you would for this, and you're not going to break it. So I've learned my lesson. I've moved on. If you have one of those uh, $10 canes and you're ready to move up, this is my uh, this is the one I use now. I highly suggest it, or highly recommend it. Your weight's on it. You pop it up. We're going to thrust. Comes into the other hand. That's all I did was just turn, and then I'm going to chop at that angle. I'm going to step in, and I'm going to thrust again, and at this angle. See how it's now at a nice angle because the other hand is on it? If they grab your cane, whether they grab here, or they grab here, or they grab in here, you're simply going to turn your cane either up or down. It doesn't have to go 180 degrees or it doesn't have to go any significant amount. Just a, month, a little bit of a turn, a little bit of a turn, and wherever you turn, then you're gonna push down, turn, and then you're gonna push down. And that's gonna break most of the grabs. We're gonna go over grabs in another video, but I wanted to show you that from here, you have this nice angle that comes into the throat, knocks the teeth down the throat, nose. When we talk about self-defense, we talk about what can you remove or destroy targets, find your targets, destroy targets, remove targets, their ability to see, breathe temporarily, breathe permanently, right? Their ability to stand upright, their ability to stand at all, or maybe it's smashing the knee. Now, after you've done this thrust, I wanna add one more strike. Imagine it's come in and smash someone here, or somewhere here, you're gonna reach past. And I don't care what you grab, grab the ear rip it off their face for self-defense. Take the skin off their, their face, off their nose, off the eyes, the teeth. It will come off in chunks very easily, very quickly with a little bit of pressure. You're strong enough. This is all self-defense. I know it's disgusting and gruesome to think about, but it's life or death. It's you or them. You have every right to defend yourself. And you're gonna use violence against their violence. From here in this position, thrust, other hand on it, turn your body, thrust again, and rake, just rake that straight through, somewhere on the face, in through the neck. It can be in through their shoulder, their arm, their muscle here. You can get it back in there. If you've ever had a massage, you know how tight that can get. There's a lot of nerves in there. You just reach up, that, that'll pull them straight down and then throw your knee in for self-defense. But you're able to destroy, yeah. Fight fire with fire. Another way to think about it, Tim Larkin in his books, Tim Larkin wrote, when violence is the answer. Because some people say violence is never the answer. Good evening, Sensei Emmett. But Tim Larkin in his book says when violence is the answer, 
It's in this case where they're bigger, there's multiple attackers, they mean to hurt you, they've jumped you, they're, um, they're a career criminal, they're a career abuser, they've done it over and over and over again, and the more they do it, the more they're gonna do it. And they see you as an easy target, and they come after you, the only thing you have left, you don't have speed, I had to get that off there, you don't have speed, you're not gonna beat them with your speed, you're not gonna beat them with your power, you're not gonna overpower them with better technique, You've, you, you don't have that like you used to, or maybe you've never had it, doesn't matter. What you do have is an understanding of the principles of violence, right? And that's that this, this nose here is gonna break under a few pounds of pressure. Blood comes out, it's hard to breathe. You push into the eyes, they have to go back. You take that right there and you hook an eye and it pops out of their head, that's gonna stop the fight most of the time. Or you go into the ear and you hook the whole head and you control the head, you can control the body. Hit that uh, here in the neck, either do serious permanent damage or uh, you know temporary damage. Hopefully, you don't have to hurt them that bad. But it's all self-defense. You're using the principles of violence. These are not power strikes. They're not strong. They're not stronger, faster. You're not learning any kind of jujitsu, any kind of boxing, any kind of muay thai to beat them in a fight. It's not a fight. It's life or death. So you're using the principles of self-defense to defend yourself. Let's go over that basic combo one more time. The crook is facing out. You're gonna pop it up, back up. I will defend myself. And then you're gonna go straight in with that first thrusting motion. Remember that's like a jab, jab. Just come straight in, immediately get the other hand on it. Use that hammer, like the shillelagh, like that Irish fighting stick. Right against, maybe you break the jaw. Maybe you, you know, smash this orbital bone under the eye. Maybe you bust them in the ear and they can't hear. Maybe you go into that neck where you hit that uh, process of nerves and then it flushes the blood out of the brain. They drop like a rock, unconscious. Maybe you're going into their arm. And that's why I have the chair out. I wanted to see, show you, you can do all of these techniques. I'm gonna adjust the camera a little bit. My apologies for the shaky camera. I don't have a camera person. Maybe you have to be seating or sitting. Maybe you're waiting for a bus, train, uh, subway, um, you're in the airport, you're at the cafe, you are in your house at the kitchen table, you're getting out of bed in the morning, you live with somebody who's an abuser. I don't know what it is, but you're sitting, right? From this position, pop it up, you have that same thrust, you have that same hammer, you have that same second thrust, and then you have that same raking motion across the body all with this crook. And this is where that close quarters combat concept comes in. When you're using, you're talking about self-defense cane or training cane self-defense, we talk about close combat, close combat in a hallway, close combat in a doorway, close combat, they jump on top of you in the subway, on the bus. You have to immediately defend yourself. You don't have the room to do some of these other big, long swinging strikes then you're gonna use that crook. Fast, fast, right? Thrust, rip. And again, you're letting the cane itself do the job. This is that cane master's cane. I'm going back up. By the way, Sensei Emmett, I was gonna ask you when I saw you again, it's good to see you, if you wanted to talk to Keith Melton, who is the maker of all these canes, who owns Cane Masters. I think he would be a good addition. If you guys haven't seen Sensei Emmett's channel, go check out Sensei Emmett's channel. He has interviews with some of the best martial artists and self-defense experts because martial arts and self-defense are not the same thing. They live in the same neighborhood. They share techniques, but they're definitely not the same thing. But if you want to talk to Keith, um, Keith Melton, super interesting guy. He had, I think he has like the largest private collection of spy memorabilia in the world as, a, as an independent person. And he put together the Spy Museum in Washington, D.C. Like legit, like he's got the, uh, the uh, ice pick, the ice axe, that they killed Leon Trotsky with back in Mexico City. He bought it or something. Interesting guy. Anyway, talk about violence. From here, don't want to get too off track because I want to show you one more time and then I want you to practice it over and over again. When you're learning cane self-defense, you start training self-defense cane and you want to know about close quarters combat. You're so close in here. Yeah, um, Dave O'Neill is awesome and... Uh, Totally different perspective. So if you got Dave O'Neill and then you have the um, uh, Keith Melton bought Cane Masters from Mark Shuey who started, who, who is kind of the, the father of, of modern cane training. 
there's been hop keto cane and kung, kung fu cane for years, but really it's been codified and, and matured and evolved because of people like Dave O'Neill, but also people like Mark Shuey and then Keith Melton, who's also an older gentleman in his 70s. He then advanced it again, and before, um, before he would let, you know, Mark, Mark Shuey, maybe he's getting a little older, saying, I don't know if I'm gonna do it anymore. He says, no. Keith Melton comes forward and says, let me, let me keep it going. Let me buy this company and try to um, keep, keep, the, keep the love alive, the love for the cane alive. So I think he's a really interesting guy for you to talk to. Anyway, so from here, I'm, my weight's on it. I pop it up, practice on both sides. Thrust, the other hand, chopping motion, ax right to the cheek, right? Break that jaw, hit him in the temple, hit him in the neck, hit him in the shoulder, hit him in the arm, hit him here, and then thrust again. Now that you have two hands on it, you'll be in a very powerful position to thrust. Reach through, and whatever you can grab with that cane master's tooth. Uh, we, we don't have them in, uh, or they don't, they don't have them in the UK yet, but I know, I think there's a company in Belgium maybe that, and uh, maybe since I am it, maybe you know, there is a company in Europe, in the EU, that makes them, and it's just so expensive to ship right now. I don't understand it, but it's hard to ship anything over like a letter is costing a ridiculous amount. You pay more for shipping than you do for the cane if you get a Cane Masters cane in Europe. But there are options in Europe. I'll find one if you send me an email. Go to pasquinelli.com and reach out and say, hey, I'm in Europe, where can I get a cane? I know because I have a guy who's over there who's telling me, uh, I've got, he sent me some pictures, He's several good looking canes and about the same price, maybe a little more, a little less, I don't know. They're not expensive. Go look at the price below. From here, you pop it up, thrust, other hand, chop, second thrust, see how I kind of move my body in, and then rake. And again, that big Cane master sharp tooth, it's not super sharp either. It doesn't have to be, it's just hard wood. That against flesh, that's the principle. The principle of close quarters combat, close combat with your walking cane is use the cane for what the cane's design. You're not boxing them. Use violence against violence. Use that to break flesh or smash the flesh, rip the flesh, knock the teeth down the throat, collapse the cartilage for self-defense. It's not pretty, it's very ugly, but it is self-defense and it does work. It's very effective. Take a look at this one again if you want to see the, the link below. Reach out to me. Let me know what else you guys want to work on. I've got this whole new series of videos coming up and this idea that you need to grow. You would only grow outside of your comfort zone. And we're so comfortable, right? Um, we keep pushing buttons for everything, trying to make everything comfortable. And every time I climb mountains, I'm reminded that there's no way to make it easier, right? You put a pack on your back, you go straight up a mountain, you have to rope up in some areas because the crevasses might fall 1,800 feet, 4,000 feet, you might fall off the side of a mountain and you don't hit anything for 5,000 feet until you hit those first crag, you're dead. But there's, and there's no way to make it easier. You've got to suit pay it. I love climbing mountains for that reason. I love doing certain things. And that is when you feel the most alive, that's when you grow. Now that's all relative too. So I had this new series of um, the comfort zone, discomfort zone workouts. So we're gonna do one of those a little bit later today, discomfort zone workouts. And we're also gonna do some old man strength we're gonna do some of the other uh, bow staff training and spinning. I wanted to thank you guys again for being here. And uh, yeah, send me, send me your, vi your, your questions, send me your video requests. What else do you wanna work on? Any weapon you want. I'm researching right now the unbreakable umbrella and the security umbrella. So far, it's not that great. I'm not getting really good reviews. But I love this idea of having another option. If you can carry an umbrella, it doesn't, it's not the same category as the cane. Cane's a self-defense or a um, mobility device. You can take it anywhere, but you can also take an umbrella almost everywhere too, because it's an umbrella. And if you have one of these unbreakable umbrellas, you can do almost every single strike with an umbrella that you can do with this. And if it's made not to break, it's really gonna work. Yeah, Kevin and Chris, sons of cane. Oh yeah, ask, go to their channel. Ask those guys, where do you get a cane? Because they're in, I know they prefer the Cane Masters Cane, Sons of Cane, because of uh, Grandmaster Shuey. They came here for some of those seminars, and I think he went there. But um, Sons of Cane is a British uh, pair of British guys, and they have they might have a good resource for canes if you're in Europe, especially if you're in Great Britain. Anyway, you guys have been awesome. I'll see you in just a little bit. Thank you so much. If you haven't subscribed, please do so, and I will see you guys in a little bit.